Yo, what's up? Dr. Swole here, MD Bodybuilder, back with another video. Today I'm going to be giving you a full science-based hypertrophy program based on the Arnold Split. The Arnold Split is an underrated setup that works well for six days per week. This will be a low volume program well suited for beginners or those in their first one to two years of serious training. Here's the basic setup. The split divides your body up into three days. Chest and back, shoulders, biceps and triceps, and legs. You'll notice that there are two upper bodies for each lower body day, and the fact that you split up your upper body into chest and back and shoulders and arms gives you some unique benefits that we'll talk about later in the video. Quick outline for today, we're going to start off with a program walkthrough where I go through the entire program, everything you need to know to run it, including exercises, sets, and reps. After that, we'll talk about the weekly setup, or how to spread out your workouts across the week. Finally, we'll talk about the pros and cons of the Arnold split for hypertrophy. For more free science-based training programs, make sure you subscribe, like the video, and let's get into it. All right, let's do our program walkthrough. So this is Dr. Swold's Arnold Split program set for low volumes, so well designed for a beginner athlete. We've got chest and back day number one, shoulders and arms one, legs one, chest and back two, shoulders and arms two, and leg day number two. Here are the exercises, and there are the sets and reps. Down here, we have the total number of sets for each day so you have an idea of workout length. And down here, we have our weekly muscle group set volumes. You'll immediately see that this is a low volume program, so well designed for someone in their first one to two years of serious training. We've got quads, glutes and hamstrings, chest, back, side delts, biceps, triceps, and calves. Starting off with chest and back day number one, we have bench press for the chest, three sets of six to eight. After that, we have barbell rows for the back, three sets of six to 10. Then we have lat pull downs for the back, three sets of eight to 12, followed by upright rows, which I count for the side delts, but we'll slip this in here as a sneaky sort of back movement since they also hit the traps, three sets of eight to 12. I get a lot of questions about upright rows. They are safe as long as you perform them correctly. I'd recommend using a wider grip and focusing on external rotation. Lastly, we have abs, three tri-sets. And in a tri-set, I recommend you have three exercises back to back that you hit in a row with no rest in between. This is just an easy way to fit in more volume. Next, we have shoulders and arms day number one. We start off with barbell overhead press, three sets of five to eight. Next, we have cable curls for the biceps, three sets of six to 10. And you can superset these with overhead cable extensions for the triceps, three sets of eight to 12. After that, we have incline curls for the biceps, three sets of eight to 12, which you can superset with dumbbell lateral raises for the side delts, three sets of eight to 12. Moving on to leg day number one, we start off with squats for the quads, three sets of five to eight. After that, we have Romanian deadlifts, three sets of six to 10 for the glutes and hamstrings. Then we have leg presses for the quads, three sets of eight to 12. And you can superset these with leg press calf raises, three sets of eight to 12. And lastly, we have seated leg curls for the hamstrings, three sets of 10 to 15. Next, we have chest and back day number two. We start off with incline dumbbell bench press for the chest, three sets of six to 10. After that, we have weighted chin-ups for the back, three sets of six to 10. If you can't do weighted chin-ups yet, you can start with just plain chin-ups or even do assisted chin-ups with bands or an assistance chin-up machine if you're not strong enough yet. Following that, we have single arm dumbbell rows for the back, three sets of eight to 12. Then we have more upright rows for the side delts, three sets of 10 to 15. And finally, some more abs, three tri-sets. Next, we have shoulders and arms day number two. We start off with close grip bench press, which I count for the chest and triceps, three sets of six to 10. You'll find that you'll be able to push a lot more weight on your close grip bench press when it comes first in the workout rather than after your main pushing movements. And you'll see here another side benefit of having a dedicated shoulders and arms day. That is, you can include some accessory pressing movements like close grip bench press, which you might count for the triceps, but also serve as a good bench press accessory movement and will indirectly give you some extra frequency for the chest. After this, we have dumbbell hammer curls for the biceps, three sets of six to 10. And you can superset these with cable press downs for the triceps, three sets of 10 to 15. After this, we have preacher curls for the biceps, three sets of 10 to 15, followed by dumbbell lateral raises for the side delts, three sets of 10 to 15. And you'll see that when I repeat exercises, I tend to switch up the rep ranges. Finally, we have leg day number two. We start off with deadlifts for the glutes and hamstrings, three sets of five to eight, followed by squats for the quads, three sets of six to 10. And you'll see that with a squat, we have a day more focused on strength with lower reps, and then a day focused more on higher reps and lighter weights. 
The squats on day two will also be better predisposed towards higher reps and lighter weights since they come after deadlifts. If your legs are a little fatigued already, it's probably not the best time to be trying to push the heaviest weights. That is, I like having my heaviest work for a certain movement coming on the day when it's the most fresh. Moving on, we have Bulgarian split squats for the glutes and hamstrings, three sets of eight to 12. Then we have leg extensions for the quads, three sets of 10 to 15. And we finish off with machine calf raises, three sets of 10 to 15. Notice that I start each workout with the heaviest compound movement first, and then move on to lighter, more isolation type work later on. This will make sure you get the most out of your big heavy movements. Okay, now that you've seen the program, let's go through how to set it up throughout the week. Here's my preferred layout. We start off with chest back day one, then shoulders and arms one, legs one, and then go on to chest back two, shoulders and arms two, legs two, and rest. A couple of considerations here. First of all, when you have chest back and shoulders and arms next to each other, you want the chest and back training to come before the shoulder and arm training. The idea here is that your shoulders and arms will be used in an auxiliary fashion in your chest and back training. And if you train your shoulders and arms first, having sore arms may affect your pushing and pulling movements on your chest and back day, but not so much vice versa. Next, you typically want to spread out your chest and back days from your leg days as much as possible. And this is for a fatigue distribution. That is, you want to spread out your tough days throughout the week so you can perform as well overall as possible. We do still have a leg and chest back day next to each other, but this is still better than having your leg and chest back days come back to back twice in the week. All right, now let's talk about the pros and cons of the Arnold split. Starting off with the pros. First of all, the Arnold split allows you to train your shoulders and arms when they're fresh. I think this is a big pro of the program. In a lot of the popular science-based splits like push-pull legs and upper lower, you end up training your shoulders and arms later in the workout after your pushing and pulling movements when they're already fatigued. And the problem with this is that your work for these smaller muscle groups may not be as effective if they're already fatigued. Having a dedicated day for these muscle groups allows you to really dedicate your entire focus to them. Next, the Arnold split gives you a high frequency of pressing since you can put pressing movements on your chest back days as well as on your shoulder and arm days. This allows you to give more priority to your accessory pressing movements like overhead press or close grip bench press. In addition to helping you with strength, this can give you a side benefit of helping to build the triceps because these accessory pressing movements tend to also be great triceps builders. Next, the Arnold split allows you to have a high frequency for shoulder and arm training. They get their own dedicated day, plus they get worked indirectly on your chest and back day with pushing and pulling movements. These small muscle groups tend to do well with higher frequencies. Furthermore, this split allows you to really prioritize shoulders and arms if that's your focus. And I think it's a good thing for a lot of naturals who are weak in these muscle groups. Finally, the Arnold split is good for using antagonist supersets. Antagonist supersets are where you alternate exercises using opposing muscle groups. For example, alternating horizontal pressing with pulling movements or biceps with triceps. Supersets like these can be a great way to save time without sacrificing productivity. Okay, now let's talk about the cons of the Arnold split. First of all, it can be taxing for your shoulders when you have chest and shoulder days back to back, especially if you have shoulder injuries. However, I will say that this isn't going to be much of an issue in this specific program since we're dealing with low volumes in general. Since we're not doing a whole lot of volume in general, you're not going to have an issue having chest and shoulders next to each other. And even if you did, you could work around this with careful exercise selection and auto regulation in terms of how close you go to failure. Lastly, the Arnold split has a suboptimal fatigue distribution. We generally want to maximize our fatigue distribution, which means spreading out our training stress as evenly as possible across the week. Now, if you're a beginner and you're using an Arnold split, you're already doing pretty well since you're spreading out these low volumes over six days per week. And I actually don't think most beginners really need six days in the gym per week. But to get really technical, you'll see that there's quite a bit of difference between your leg days and a shoulder and arm day, for example. But since we're dealing with low volumes in general in this program, don't sweat this one too much. Now I will be sharing the full program as an Excel file in my Facebook group. So if you haven't already joined the group, find the link in the description below, join the group and you can download the Excel file for free. Now this is gonna be a bit of a limited edition thing, but I am offering personalized programs. That is, you can send me your current training program and fill a questionnaire and I'll give you an individualized training program for hypertrophy. My time is very scarce and you'll have to pay for it, but if you're interested, you can DM me on Instagram. My Instagram is at Dr. Swole. DM me the word program and I'll get back to you. If you're lucky, I might even end up making a video on your personalized program. If you've been enjoying these science-based programs, make sure you leave a comment below letting me know which program I should cover next. Make sure you subscribe and we'll see you next time.